Many thanks for joining us on today's edition of Off the Press, where we discuss headlines from the national dailies. I am, of course, Amaka Okoye. And with me in the studio to analyze major headlines are Dr. Femi Idowu Adegoke, a social commentator, and Gwalaho Olo. Olo Jede, public affairs analyst. Thank you both for coming this morning. It's good uh, to be here. Okay, so shall we begin uh, straight away with the Nation newspaper? Uh, we're beginning with the Nation newspaper, and from the front page of the Nation newspaper is it says the Ziani forfeits 14.4 billion jewelry to federal government. Uh, and items acquired in 2012. You find that on page 41 as displayed on your screen there. Ajimobi, Adeyeye, lose at tribunal. Yai, Oji, and Gobir, I believe, win. Uh, FBI combs Nigeria for $1.2 billion cyber fraudsters. EFCC arrests 167 of them. Please find that on page 42 of the Nation newspaper as displayed on, on your screen there. Now, the federal government proposes 9.789 trillion budget for 2020. And then a uh, picture story there of police and Shiite in war of words over killings during procession. You find that on page eight. And then ex-Chief Justice quizzed over $9.6 billion contract verdict. Where do we begin this morning? Oh, well, uh, maybe from the left corner. Okay. Uh, the Ziani forfeits 14.4 billion jurors. Um, I, I, I've heard a lot of commentators talking about the amount. But I don't think the problem is about the amount, whether, whether it is $40 million or it should have been $20 million or maybe it should have been there. $10 million. Uh, it's it's uh, the fact that she has not been able to show that these were not proceeds mm -hmm. of crime. Uh, you know, there was an initial challenge uh, when, the, when this thing was initially forfeited. Mm -hmm. She went to court to challenge it. and. Uh, I think this is the final bus stop for this particular case. I, I wish we could, uh, uh, in the same fashion, pursue other opportunities to confiscate items that were procured mm -hmm. by process of crime. And whatever investigative skills we need to be able to establish those things. Did, did you reach those affidavits? Uh, by FBI on yes. the um, quite extensive, quite extensive, deep. detailed work. Those are the kind of levels we need to get to with our investigations. Narrow these things down, and where there are proceeds of crime or money that should believe to our, belong to our Commonwealth, we should be able to take hold of those things mm -hmm. and seize them, and not just that, be able to reach out and punish where there are sanctions for those kind of institutions. Yeah, I can see, uh, Dr. Femi, you're nodding in uh, affirmation. Yes. yes, I'm in agreement because we need to become a process system state whereby we we'll get down to the nitty gritty. Let's just not just make noise and talk, talk. But like he said, if you look at the report of the FBI, it was very, very comprehensive. And there was no arguing about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like the fact that you moved away from the uh, general rhetoric of saying, oh, how could she have spent this whole amount of uh, money on jewelry to <laughs> say she, she's not able to defend that yeah, it's not proceeds, yeah. you know, from uh, corruption and all that. But aren't you really worried that someone could spend all of this amount on jewelry? I mean, like, I, I, like I said, I don't know what's the basis for the valuation. The valuation mm -hmm. may not even be correct. But at the same time, there are, it, it, it shows what has happened to our values over time. Mm. If you see a jury of um, a billion, somebody wearing a jury of a billion, will you know? Mm, good question there. It's, it's a good question. It's something to think about. I think there was even an iPhone, a gold-plated iPhone. I can assure you that the founder of Apple, you won't find a gold-plated Apple with him That's when he was alive. Mm. So what are we talking about here? So we, we, we should... It would also be nice. Let's assume that the Zeni indeed invested 14.4 billion in jewelry. Mm. Can we go to our village <laughs> and see how much poverty has been removed out of that society mm. by virtue of having children that have those kind of humongous wealth? How has it impacted the people? I think those are the questions. Which should be, what should there. matter, so yes. to speak. All right. Um, we have here police and shared in word of words over killing during procession. Uh, Dr. Idowu, what are your thoughts here? Yeah. The shite said they killed some numbers. The police says no, mm. that they've arrested 64. 
well, we don't. We've not seen evidence, we, so to speak. In this case of phone yes. and uh, videos, yeah. there should be evidence. Yeah, because, I mean, even if we dismiss it, so to speak, that mainstream media did not show it. But in this day of uh, everyone is almost a citizen journalist, uh, journalist yeah. Yeah. we should see evidence. Yeah. That would be my position. We should yeah. see evidence of that it happened. That it happened. Um, look, look at it from this way. Most of the other, this is not the first protest, and most of the other ones, including those ones that had violence and death, mm -hmm. were captured. And we saw the videos. Mm -hmm. And even the mainstream media did publish them mm -hmm. and wrote about them. Why would this be different? And this is a day after. This is a day after. So. Questions to be raised there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so ex Chief Justice squeezed over 9.6 billion contract verdict. Uh, we're still on this matter. It doesn't look like we are going anywhere uh, oh, yeah. out of it anytime soon. But anyways. Um, that, that's the investigation side of so things. So we'll wait while there I'm is safe. a resolution side of things. How are we going to clinically close out this matter? Mm -hmm. Then there is the investigation part. Who did what? Who did not do what? If you ask me, we shouldn't even pay a naira to an organization. Why did you say so? Where is their consideration? Where is their skin in the game? If someone is saying, um, you have done wrong to me in a contract, what are the elements of a contract? You have the offer, the acceptance, mm -hmm. you have consideration and the meeting of mind. Where is their consideration? So when you go to the community where that project was supposed to have happened, nobody has heard Anything about, about the About the company. They've never heard the name of the company. There is nothing on ground. Okay, the guy said, oh, I imported $40 million. Nobody, CBN will see. There's so, what you call cap, so certificate of capital importation when you bring foreign currency into the country. Mm -hmm. CBN is saying, I have not seen any Any evidence that $40 million was imported into this country. So if somebody has not invested a dime in a project, how can he stand to gain $9.6 billion? Tell me. Where is the consideration? Where is the skin in the game? Oh. So the issue of we are negotiating how much to pay them, if you ask me, on we a personal be opinion, it's totally off the table. It's an abrogation, total abrogation of this uh, 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 claim that we should be talking about. Hmm. All right, and that's it. Uh, FBI combs Nigeria, uh, 1.2 billion cyber fraud stars, EFCC arrest 167. Uh, there seem to be a good collaboration between EFCC and uh, FBI there and um, uh, back of the nation newspaper it's a columnist uh, talking Festus Ereye, South Africa's theater of hate I know that this is it must have to do with the xenophobic attacks uh, even as the head the topic there suggests please grab a copy of the nation newspaper and find out for yourself what that is about and then we'll move on to the punch Buhari verse Atiku. Did this, this guy's thing, uh, okay, there's no yeah, mention, just to be sure that we didn't skip that. So today is the D-Day, tribunal rules today, APC, PDP, confident of victory. What should we expect? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so they are ruling today. Well, what are your thoughts, gentlemen? Yeah, my take on that is whatever the tribunal says today, Nigerians should not take to violence or uh, should not let the... Uh, the, the, the judgment of the tribunal affect the polity of the country because we already have enough on our hand dealing with. So mm. we should just let it sleep and let's roll with whatever the tribunal says. Do you agree? Uh, well, I, I, I know oh, that whichever, whichever, take? whichever way the pendulum swings today, mm. there will still be an appeal. Most likely, this is not a case that will. This is a case that will finally make its way to the Supreme Court. Mm. Traditionally, that is the way it has been. Yeah. Uh, if you look through history or uh, since 1999 for democracy, it might be. If you if you just want to pattern it after that, then you will say that most likely the incumbent will retain the post. Mm. But at the same time, there, there's always a point in time when there could be a change. Mm -hmm. So there's a possibility also that it could flip the other way, whichever way it flips. Um, it is important that we maintain the peace. Mm. All right. Uh, so that's uh, the big story there on the Punch newspaper. And here, just right below, there is a picture story of 
um, the Shiites who did the procession yesterday. IMN alleges 15 Shiites were killed. Uh, the punch says it's 15. Uh, from the news this morning, we had 10. This looks like the number is increasing. But police say they arrested 64. Please find that on page 2 of the punch newspaper as displayed on your screen there. And right at the top, uh, uh, at the bottom left is minimum wage. FG Labour agree on fresh talks on page 21 of the punch newspaper. I will come to you. <laughs> I can see you're, 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 not, you're shaking your head there. Abducted Ondo uh, professor found dead, sadly, uh, in a bush. That's on page four. And then Adeyeye loses seat. Ajimobi fails in Senate B. That's on page 18. We we'll also have pictures uh, seemingly from the pro uh, procession of yesterday. Let me start with you because I saw you, I saw you by, uh, with my eyes uh, <laughs> when I read out uh, the minimum wage minimum thing. Wage What's thing. going uh, through uh, your mind? Unfortunately, um, it seems as if it was a wrong timing uh, for the minimum wage. Uh, it was a, it was a, it, it's a turbulent time for the revenues of the government in itself, in all, at, at all levels, mm -hmm. uh, federal and the, state, and the state government. So it, it, this might be leading to why we have this negotiation being prolonged. We started this like early in the year, and this is September. Hmm. By next month, we're in the last quarter of the year. So, and a lot of these things are still not being implemented. Um, so, I, I think government should find a way to do some sort of phase implementation, um, maybe for for the for the lower people mm -hmm. implement. Then you can now talk about to adjust the salaries of the other people that will be affected. Mm. But the people who are still on the eighteen thousand, can we move them up? and then go from there. Hmm. Do you share the same thoughts? Also? Yeah, I think I agree because um, the country presently is having issues with our revenue. And then if you look at the budget for 2020, it's actually been reduced to what we have in 2019. Hmm. So we're not, we're not making enough revenue to service these uh, recurrent or uh, salaries to be paid. So we, there has to be a phase implementation and that's why the uh, the negotiation is lingered for that long. Okay, see here on uh, the Punch newspaper, we can see the Foreign uh, Affairs Minister Onyama saying, government begins evacuation of uh, Nigerians in South Africa, those who have agreed to come back. Atmosphere tense in South Africa. Uh, that's on page 21 as displayed there. APC repays my sacrifice with evil. Okoracha says on page 18, and FG reduces the yeah, 2020 budget size to uh, 9.7 trillion naira. APC repays my sacrifice with evil, Okoracha is saying. <laughs> um, why? Is it well, funny? I, I think he went too far to start talking about APC. He should have started from his own home people. What views do they have about mm -hmm. it? Uh, and I, that's, that's the right way to start some self-appraisal. You have done very well. Your home people will also be praising you. Mm. No matter what anybody does at the, at the center, somebody could say, oh, it was because of you that we have this. They it was because of you trumpet. that we have that. So your people will blow your trumpet, and that should bring you joy, irrespective of partisan politics at, mm. at, at the center. But it doesn't seem as if he has done much. I mean, I've not been to... He must stayed for stay. several years now. I mean, I walked there a bit from a decade ago, you know. But I wonder what he has done. But the music coming from Emo has not been very sonorous about him, mm. you know. So I wonder what he's talking about. I wonder too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I wonder he's, too. No, he's typical of a Nigerian politician. Now, for me, I'm seeing that he wants to jump ship. Hmm. And that's why he's singing this song. Last week, there was a there was a caption about him. Now he's coming out that APC is repaying him with evil. Don't worry. Let's watch the space. In a couple of weeks now, you hear his decamp to PDP. Follows. Yeah. Well. So find that story, please, on page 18. And then, of course, the evacuation uh, story is also there. Gov uh, government begins evacuation. It's still scary to me uh, when they say atmosphere is tense in South Africa. Atmosphere is tense because mm. there are still protests all over the whole place. Uh, I think Sunday, 
Then one of the days of this week, there were yes. some protests as well. Uh, on, on, on Monday, Monday. Monday. yes, yeah, so you, uh, you were here, we had that conversation. I, I read somewhere last night that uh, the lane ambush mm. for Nigerians the coming who back. Want to come back. Mm. So the, uh, the atmosphere will definitely be tense. Mm. Even people who want to come back don't know how to move, they will be scared and all that. So. Hmm. I don't know how we're going to get over this. I hope we get over this. Yes, yeah. Airpiece is offering to airlift people. But again, is that enough? What does, it, looks, it seems to me that more decisive action needs to be taken to see that, you know, this thing, this whole thing is, is either we are there or really we are not there or we make our place safe for our people to stay, you know, as opposed to having to Evacuate. go to, yes, I, don't, I mean, go to other countries even. People will always have a need to travel, oh, to be out, to so live in other countries, so it will be there. Even mm. in the best countries around the world, there are people still live yeah. to go and live in other climes. Mm. That, that, is, that is standard. But that is not to take away from what you said, that we need to fix our country mm. and make it work for us. Mm -hmm. it, that is the pride of a nation. Absolutely you know, correct. Um, so that, that will even give you leverage when you are discussing with a country like like uh, South Africa. But when South Africa knows that you don't even have roads, you don't have rails, you don't have electricity, you know, your national budget uh, for, for, for this year is a revenue of, uh, uh, of seven trillion, whereas they were doing close to 40 trillion. What respect do they have for you mm. as a country? Because mm. you have 200 million people, is that out of end respect? 201 now. Okay. <laughs> 201 now, actually. Yeah, that's not to end respect. Mm. Yeah. All right, so we'll move to the Vanguard newspaper, and it says the first batch of 320 Nigerians back from South Africa today. They should be uh, in the country by 9 a.m., uh, following what the uh, AP said today. Ohaneze asked Southeast governors to prepare for returnees. And CBN slams penalties for delay e-payment transactions. That's on page 19 of the Vanguard newspaper. Bailouts, pressure on states as FG starts deduction. Cuts 2020 budget projections to 9.789 uh, trillion. Redu reduces rather capital expenditure to 2 trillion naira. Says fiscal challenges uh, requires bold, decisive action. All of this big story you find on page 12, page 5 rather, as displayed on your screen there and on the top uh, right side rather you, you have Atiku versus Buhari so uh, versus Buhari rather anxiety as tribunal delivers judgment today we'll all wait here and see the outcome and uh, down there it says I'll treat Boko Haram as bandits by the way I saw that that news this morning on page 9 you find that IMN claims 12 killed as police disperse members on street procession no casualties says uh, police um, he says uh, he will treat Boko Haram as bandits what does it matter whether they are bandits or, or not, Boko whatever Haram name. Or whatever. What people want is peace. I want to be able to go to my farm yeah. and farm. I want to be able to sleep you in my house with both live. eyes closed. I want to be able to pursue happiness. An assurance of security. That is, that is essentially what people want. Mm. Yeah, so the, is the cutting and dicing a bandit, they are religious fanatics, or they are from Libya or from Niger, or they are our own people, they are political. It is irrelevant at the end of the day. That's true. At the end of the day. People just want... Peace. Mm. Security. Does it? Yeah. So this says uh, um, tribunal delivers judgment and anxiety. Would, you, would there be anxiety? Uh, is there any <laughs> reason for anyone? Well, maybe uh, the parties involved. Maybe there should be some, maybe I, I there is some level the involved, of anxiety. Yeah, it goes beyond the parties involved. Nigerians, okay. That's what, you know, we said we should just maintain peace, whatever comes out of it. Are you anxious? Uh, not, I might not be anxious, but. Mm -hmm. A lot of Nigerians might be because we that means we don't know where we're going. Mm -hmm. We don't like know what by the end of today what yeah, is going to come our out. Our course of uh, the next four years might change, but like he said, it's not going to end on the tribunal's judgment. Mm -hmm. There's still going to be appeal. We're still going to have uh, turning and turning and discussion and discussion back so, and forth again yeah, so. until. Anyways, we see till the, uh, today yeah. and uh, here. My, my what hope, though. Mm -hmm. Is, is that the, the, the learned judges will delve into the substantive matters in this particular case. And it will not just be all about technicalities. When they delve into those matters of law, uh, they will help to enrich our electoral process, the, the judgment and all that stuff. And, and that, that is beautiful. Mm. So I'm, I'm hopeful there will not be 
technicalities. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that will be the call. Mm -hmm. And so we'll move now to this day uh, newspaper. Again, analysts advocate expansion, expansionary budget. FG estimates 9.7 uh, trillion in 2020. The same story is, uh, as we've heard before, insurgents not in control of any Nigerian territory. Burate insists. Please find that on page 8 of this day uh, newspaper as displayed there on your screen. And then 12 feared killed as police and shared clash during matches. Uh, we acted professionally, police say, clarify ban on procession applied to IMN only. Buhari Atiku comes upbeat as uh, tribunal delivers judgment uh, today. You find that uh, on the first page continued on page 8 as displayed, uh, uh, displayed there on your screen. Now, what are your thoughts? Uh, I listen. I mean, we had it in the news today, the, the clarification by the IG saying, you know, it's only the IMN members that uh, should not go for the procession, but other Muslims should go. How, how did that sound? How do you separate them? That's the question. Yeah. Um, unless, because I think on, on some of the processions, the IMN um, could probably be wearing an insignia or a cap or something that uh, separate them. IMN is a proscribed organization, don't forget. Mm -hmm. And uh, even their last, what is was supposed to be a peaceful protest, led to death, including mm -hmm. that of a very senior police officer. So it's a very difficult catch-22 situation for the police to handle that situation. Um, I've asked myself over and over again, if they are not wearing an insignia or something that separates them, how do you how do determine you who is who? And how mm. do you stop them? Mm. You know, so it, it, it's a tricky situation. But on, on the bigger picture, uh, the federal government has to be more uh, strategic in handling the IMN issue because proscribing a name mm. does not translate to proscribing that religion yeah. or that sect in itself. And there might still be issues around dealing with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something to say, Dr. Ido? Or you oh, agree? I'm, I'm <laughs> okay, so uh, he's in total agreement. That's great there. So uh, the back page of uh, this day is uh, a columnist, uh, Kayode Komolafe, for Great, Greta Thunberg. Uh, she is the climate activist, a 16-year-old from Sweden. Please find out what this is about. Maybe this is in praise of her recent uh, activism uh, against... Um, all the things going on in the climate. Now, xenophobia or crisis of governance, please find out what Isa Aremo is talking about on the back of this day newspaper as displayed there. And then finally, we have the complete sports. Uh, Ukraine 2-2, two -two. Uh, Ukraine and Nigeria. Is anybody happy about that? No one, no, no the, we are the, all winners in this. No, the, yeah, the goal line is good, but I watched the match. The match was... Is it, I expected it's like that a, you're going to say something. Yeah, it's like a rebat <laughs> of the new Super Eagles. For real? Yeah, in a That's long great. time, I've not seen the Super Eagles play with such fluid. Hmm. We, the, the young boys going forward were very good. Yeah, we, we drew the game. The, their second goal was, an, uh, was a foul. So it was a handball in the net. So we should hold ourselves high. That there's hope for Nigeria in the next outings with the new crops of uh, young players. Uh -huh. But will it be this new that we'll play when we get to the critical uh, level Stage. stages? Or this is the time, that will be the time they will push out this lad no, and then uh, some other people? No, I, I, I strongly believe there's no push out now because mm. most of these. They will boys, determine from now? Yeah, most, most of these new or young lads that played yesterday. Uh, they've been hanging around for a while in the team, and there's been some exit of the players like uh, Mikel Obi, um, uh, what's the other, other one? Yeah, the team. other ones. They've, they've moved out, so there's space for these new ones to come. And the joy is that there is like, for every position in the national team now, there are two, three players. So there's competition so you can get the best out of the players. Okay, so it's good to round up on that uh, positive note. Thank you, Bolaho and uh, Dr. Idowu for, for coming and sharing your thoughts with us this morning and on Off the Press. And that's where we are going to call it a wrap for today. Please join us again tomorrow, 8.30 a.m. here on Plus TV Africa for Off the Press, where we'll talk about the issues that affect us as a nation and, of course, beyond. And I am Amaka Okoye.